Hi everybody, I want to talk to you about an incredible ancient teacher called Plato. We, we often hear about Pythagoras, who was 500 BC, but around 300 BC, so that's like 2,300 years ago, his student called Plato wrote some beautiful books um, on the Republic. So this is called The Republic of Plato. And he was discoursing on things like when a population became so big, because right now we have overpopulation on the planet, he would say that we would have to, when we get to 5,040, um, we would have to um, move to another city and create another village. So you didn't just keep overpopulating one area. So 2,000 years ago, they were looking at population and density of people living together. And there was a lot of geometry involved in how they constructed their cities. And so Plato asked a very important question. He wanted to know, he wanted also to teach, and it was a secret, what is the most beautiful triangle in the world? And it comes from a quote where he says, one, two, three, but where is the fourth, my dear Timaeus? So in one of Plato's book, it was called the Timaeus, and which I don't have here, I lent it out, so I shouldn't lend my books out, but I'm missing my most important book on the Timaeus. But anyway, this is books by Plato, so he's asking one, two, three, but where is the fourth? So what I'm going to show you in three parts quickly is that part one is going to look at all these different triangles. All, all these different triangles is, um, these five triangles that I've shown here don't actually, um, are of importance because the second part is looking at the um, golden root triangle, which is this, this triangle here. There's a very special triangle. And part three, I'm going to show you actually how it's constructed. So I'll just get through, we'll just let's go through the first part. So part one, we all know the um, uh, equilateral triangle. And so that's the three sides are the same. The angles are 60 degrees. And that's an icosahedron, the shape of a virus that has 20 equilateral triangles. So that's a great triangle, but that's not the solution. We take a square, we take a, actually, let's go to this triangle here. If we divide this triangle just down the center here, we end up with one is to two. So when the hypotenuse is double that of the one, we end up with what's called root three. We've still got the 60 degree angle there, but now we found a 30 degree. So this is great in trigonometry, but this gives us root three. How do we get root two? So we take a square. So if we took a cube and we just took the diagonal of a square, we get a 45 degree and root two is 1.414. What that means is what number multiplied by itself gives us two. So we know that 1.414 times 1.414 is two. And this is 1.73. So these are very interesting triangles that you're familiar with. But then we can get to um, a dodecahedron. Um, let's have a look at this shape here. And now we have 12 pentagons here. And a lot of books have got wrong information. They're saying that that triangle here that I've shaded here, they're calling it a three, four, five triangle. They're saying that this three, four, five Pythagorean triangle is that section in the Pentagon here. And it's actually not, it's actually not that at all. So the reason why the Pentagon is important because every angle here is 108, 108, 108. So if we divide, if we, if we divide this angle here, which is 108 in half, we know that this angle in there, this angle in here is 54. Whereas in the three, four, five triangle, it's 53 degrees something. So I'm just showing you that it's, to study sacred geometry, if you want to become a mathematician, a sacred geometer, and inquire about the reality of what is, we need to look at the three, the four, and the five. So that's a, a 54 degree angle there. Okay, so the, the other important triangle, which I think is very famous. We all know that three squared plus four squared gives us five squared. And in the area of this triangle is six, because if this is a rectangle, three times four is 12, and half of 12 is six. That's how we get six square units. So that's fascinating that the Pythagorean triangle is, contains the numbers three, four, five, and six. But that angle, which we can measure, is 53.13. So they're all very different, unique frequencies and vibrations. So, the, so that's part one. But part two is the secret is when, when Plato said 
one, two, three, but what is the fourth, my dear Timaeus? We, we realize that the most beautiful triangle that he was referring to is, is the right angled um, Pythagorean um, golden root triangle. So I want to explain what I mean by the golden root. Um, okay, so the golden root has a base of one and the hypotenuse is phi, which is 1.618. That's the golden ratio. But we want to know, because we know 3, 4, 5, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, we can calculate that th th this side is called 1.272. And that's called the golden root because um, 1.272 times itself gives us 1.618. So it's called the square root of phi, or the, I call it the golden root. So part and the angle here happens to be 51 degrees and 51 minutes but as a decimal it's 51.83 and that golden the right angled golden root triangle also known as the kepler triangle that's why that's in the title is that if you look at the pyramid so from the center of the base to there if we call that one we know that the slope height to that midpoint is 1.618 and that the height of the pyramid the vertical height is 1.272. So this is a superstructure. This is a highly sophisticated and intelligent coding that they hid in stone for thousands of years. This is not 2,000 years ago. When they built the Great Pyramid Cheops, this was done like 12,000 years ago. This is Atlantean knowledge. We recorded this frequency in stone for the future generations. So part three is, um, I just want to show you how I, how we can create the golden root, 1.272, just from two arcs. So first of all, we I've drawn here, you can see an outline, an imprint of the golden rectangle. So the golden rectangle is the shape of the palm of your hand, the flat bit, it's, a, it's ergonomic. We, so we have to make structures that fit exactly this shape. So the MasterCard is one is to 1.618, but where is the golden root? So let's, let's just say we've drawn a square so you know that when you draw a square, we'll call that one by one. So this distance is one, we know that, but how do we get, so if we bisect the square, so we cut the square in half, the unit square, by, to create the golden rectangle, what we want is this mystical point here. To get that point, we take the diagonal of half the unit square. So you put the point on here, so, open up your compass to that point and you can see that when I arc so when I arc this down <clears throat> I achieve that point now suddenly this is 1.618 so that's how we get a golden rectangle but what I want to show you is how do we get the golden root which is something that I'm as you know I'm obsessed about the ubiquity of phi phi is in everything phi is the key to all dimensional structures it's the cells in our body and to the macrocosm so I, I'm, I love everything about the golden ratio and I just want to show you that with one more arc we can get the golden root so I'm going to put my compass point at the base here again but this time I'm going to open it up to 1.618 so that's the length of the golden rectangle I've opened it up to there so all I need to do now is I just do one more arc here and where that intersects the the, the, the longer side this point here is the golden root. So that this distance from here to there is now 1.272. So I'm going to highlight it in so that so this length here is this length here. There's the base, there's the base. And now <clears throat> when we draw this hypotenuse in, hypotenuse, and this is a right angle triangle, we've created the golden root triangle. And um so that's what I really love because geometry with just simple arcs and stru structures, no calculation, just with a few arcs, we're able to calculate these um, harmonic codes. And the reason why the golden root is important because when we want to establish what the true value of pi is, um, we believe that the golden ratio is in the, is in the triangle, is in the square, is in the pentagon, it's in everything about the circle. In fact, we don't even need pi ratio. But the ancient people knew that when you take the base of the pyramid, if this is one, we've got one, two, three, four, so the perimeter of the base 
is four units. And if we divide the perimeter of the base by that height, which happens to be the golden root. So if you divide four by 1.272, called the square root of five, we end up with a very specific frequency called 3.144. And that number goes forever. So 3.144 is the true value of pi and it's extruded from the Kepler triangle. And um, you'll know that when you look at an electronic calculator, they always have pi, but the, the unusual thing is that our modern day mathematics doesn't acknowledge um, the golden ratio and the golden root. In, and in fact, everything that is sacred in sacred geometry is missing on our calculator. We should be having a calculator that gives us the values for the golden root and the golden ratio 1.618. So I just wanted to let you know that you do study all your different triangles, get excited about the Kepler triangle who was around 1618, 1.618, but in the year 1618 was the year that Kepler released all this um, sacred knowledge. It all got suppressed and replaced by Newtonian physics. But when you start doing the research and look beyond Newton and start studying the works of Kepler and the masters and Leonardo da Vinci, you'll see that the golden root is not just the key to all creation, but it is a superstructure.